Welcome back. By now, you guys know that there is nothing that I hate more than media lies and its corresponding mob justice. Perhaps some of the greatest media lies over this past year were pertaining to the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Ruthlessly smeared and libeled as a white supremacist, the media became obsessed with pushing their lies about what happened in Kenosha the night that he ran for his life. So obsessed that they even stalked, harassed, and punished those who supported the truth. Former Lieutenant William Kelly was one such man who was punished for siding with the truth. When left-wing hackers released the details of those who anonymously donated to Kyle Rittenhouse's defense fund last year, Lieutenant Kelly's name was among them. The Guardian, of course, the despicable left-wing rag of a publication, released his name to the public, which led to Lieutenant Kelly being fired and publicly humiliated by the Norfolk Police Department in April of this year. To be clear, he donated just $25. Kelly is a 19-year veteran and a father of three. That did not matter. He made the contribution anonymously so as not to draw attention or association to the police force. That also did not matter. His spineless police chief, Larry Boone, a radical BLM supporter who attended BLM rallies in uniform, allowed the double standard of his dismissal to occur because to Boone, delivering mob justice mattered more than siding with the truth. Since his dismissal, William who goes by Bill, Kelly, has been surviving on his savings and his wife's teacher salary. This is unacceptable. The routine threats, lies, and the duress that our police officers nationwide are made to face to satisfy the Black Lives Matter radical narrative cannot continue. All police officers, officers have a right to privately support issues and causes that they care about in their off-duty time. In this particular circumstance, Lieutenant Kelly was supporting the truth. So in continuation of the Thanksgiving Day, I thought... I am extremely grateful to all of the men and the women that serve in blue, to the people that stand up and put their lives on the line daily to protect their community, but also those that stand up to protect the truth. So guys, I am so grateful because sometimes they're standing up to criminals, other times they are simply standing up to lies, and I'm pleased to announce that Lieutenant Kelly is here today to share his story. Please give him a warm welcome. To Hello. Meet you. Good to meet you. So, <laughs> all right, I am super, super excited to have you here. I'm assuming you did not expect to be on the Candace show today. No, yeah, just like totally blow, totally like not on your expectations at all. Out of the blue. Well, I'm happy. I like I like to surprise people. And, you know, so when I caught this story, actually, I had not followed the story since last April. It actually, I saw it in the Daily Mail, and I picked up on this, obviously, reading all the madness that followed the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. And I saw the story, and I thought, this is especially horrific. So I kind of just want you to take my audience through exactly what happened, when it happened, how it happened. Sure. So just like everybody else in America, I watched the videos that showed the shooting. I watched the videos that showed uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's interactions with the journalist beforehand. And uh, I thought it was a pretty clear-cut case of self-defense, just like a lot of people. And you might know this, by the way, because you have a little bit of experience with this. Yes, I've, I've been a police officer for a minute and a half, so uh, <laughs> I've, I've got some experience in that field. But 17 years, is that correct? 19 and change. 19 years, and yes. also in, in the homicide division, is that right? I've worked homicide. I've worked violent crime. Uh, my Growing up in the police department, I was in violent crimes. Yes, wow, okay. So I saw it, it was pretty clear what had happened. And when he was indicted for murder and for the malicious wounding, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I started thinking about why that might have happened and all I could think of was pressure from the public, social, social pressure. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that Mr. Rittenhouse had the means to make his claim in court to a jury. So I, I chose to give him the $25 donation and he seemed like he was there for all the right reasons. It's like his heart was in the right place. You might be able to argue that it was unwise for a 17-year-old to do that, but he seemed like a legitimately good person who was right. there for the right reasons. So I, I gave him some comments of encouragement, and I, I thought nothing else of it. And I, your comments were like, keep your head up, you know, right. you did the right thing in this right. scenario, like right. just totally encouraging, but also anonymous. Correct. Okay. So there's a, a box you could check for do, um, giving the donation in the comments anonymously, and I, I did check that box. And nowhere in my comments did I say I was a police officer or that I worked for the city of Norfolk or the Norfolk Police Department. So I thought you know, I was just going to be one of another hundred comments in an otherwise uh, anonymous venue. But then, like you said, there was a hacker. Hacker broke into the Gibson Go website 
And Interesting, right, that a hacker would choose to, I mean, and this is kind of shows how vicious, right. tons of things hackers could do, right? right. Hacking into a, a campaign of raising money for legal defense seems like a strange focus for hackers, but they did it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And they were able to connect m my donation and my comments to me. And then they, were, they figured out I was a police officer. They gave the information to the Guardian. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm fired. So how did you, so tell me how you found out that your name was even released. Because I imagine I give a non donation. I'm like, you know what, hope this kid figures it out. I saw the video. He did the right thing. Right. Where are you when you suddenly wake up and your whole life has changed? You've been working for 19 years as a police officer and yeah. everything went upside down. I'm getting ready for work one day, and a fellow police officer called my cell phone and said that they started getting phone calls from uh, different people who were critical of my decision to donate. And he just wanted to give me a heads up. So I called my boss, I told him what was going on, and he was like, okay, no, no big deal, just come to the office, write a letter of explanation, you know. So I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal. Mm -hmm. But then as the day progressed, it became clear that they were starting to feel the pressure from the social media tweets and the emails and the phone calls. And this is the mob justice that happens. They say, yes. you know, we're going to create a political pressure campaign until we get what we want. This is literally what mob justice is, right? Yeah. It seemed to be divorced from logic and reason. It was a stri strictly emotionally driven day. But as the day goes on, I'm doing several interviews. I, I asked to go home because we had received death threats and I had kids at home. Mm -hmm. um, I was told, no, I have to stay, finish doing these interviews. And by the end of the day, I started thinking, there's, there's no way they're gonna discipline me this, for this, right? And I come to work that Monday and I'm fired. Wow, so who sat you down and fired you? It was my commanding officer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's normally the way it goes. Uh, I had reached out to the chief over the weekend asking, you know, am, am I really gonna lose my job? I told him about the, the family and the uh, insurance, but uh, never got a response back, never got a chance to talk to him. So you said, I have a family, I have three kids. Yeah. Uh, if I lose this insurance. Yeah. Yeah, I know how expensive private market insurance is these days. And I just, having that, that gap in coverage, yeah, scary. It's scary for your whole family. Like right. It's just having the carpet. He didn't even honor it with a response. Right. So I want to weigh this against, um, but by the way, I do want to get to some of the quotes that came from the mayor, but I first want to weigh this response against the police chief who did march in uniform at a Black Lives Matter event, right? Right. Why was that okay? It it's inconsistent. If he can be on duty in uniform carrying a BLM sign, uh, an organization that is a little controversial in America today, uh, the sign even- Calling called, for defunding the police, by the way. Right. And the sign even had the name of a person who had recently been shot by a Norfolk police officer demanding justice for that person. And the Commonwealth attorney was still trying to figure out whether or not we should charge that officer criminally. And in that environment, that's when he chose to hold that sign and walk around the city of Norfolk. Okay, so when they terminated you, what was the reason that they gave you? They gave me a, a couple of alleged policy violations. They said that I was acting as a spokesperson for the city and a spokesperson for the city of Norfolk when I made those comments, even though, like we said- It was anonymous. Completely anonymous. A hacker broke into it, right. took it, and now they're saying, you know what, you were acting in the capacity of a police officer. Uh, they said that I engaged in conduct unbecoming a police officer. Mm -hmm. in that my comments brought disrepute to the police department, mm -hmm. and um, they, they alleged uh, a few other things. But th those are the, t the two big things. Okay, so even though it was anonymous, even though your comments basically said, hey, Kyle, keep your head up, like, yeah. you know, uh, they said this brought disre disrepute, but they were totally fine with their police chief going out and exercising. Seemingly. Yeah, his political beliefs. Has there been a feeling, um, and I have to imagine just amongst police officers in general all around the country, that there, that there is this sort of, like, there is no justice anymore. Like, Black Lives Matter is now running, uh, you know, elements that should be all about justice, that now it's like immediately people cave to pressure because they just don't want to be smeared and libeled and called a racist. Police officers like the rule of law. The law is black and white. We apply the law equally in every situation, regardless of who's involved. And when we're told to stand down in certain situations when we would otherwise be making arrests, it, it's, it's confusing and it's, it certainly brings morale down. Right, and the police chief, he's black, yeah. so he did really the opposite of what you did. He publicly endorsed something politically. He publicly stood out in his uniform and endorsed something and it was totally fine. You do something privately, hackers find it and it's not okay. And they actually, they're not done with that. They also wanted to sort of publicly humiliate you, right? So I saw that the mayor, I do want to pull up exactly what the mayor said. Um, mayor Kenneth Cooper 
of Norfolk said, the statements and alleged actions of a member of the Norfolk Police Department are alarming and, and in, are not in any, way, are in any way inconsistent with our city's values or the standards set for our employees. So they're basically making, alarming is a very, that's a buzzword, right? It makes it seem like as if you said something like, hey, grab a gun and right. shoot some people. Like that's not at all what you said. You just said, keep your head up, Kyle, privately. And this is, this is being released publicly. I mean, what is the response from people that you know, you know, friends in the neighborhood? I can only imagine what your wife went through. This is like, a, suddenly you're thrown into the ringer publicly and the mayor is denigrating you despite the fact that you've served, you know, you've served this city for, for 19 years. So not only did the mayor make those comments, but the city manager also came out with similar comments, uh, the police chief as well. Um, I'm a pretty smart guy, I'm a hard worker. I thought it'd be easy to get a job after I got fired, but I, I couldn't get so much of a callback from employers. And I, can, I attribute a lot of that to the comments that were made publicly against me. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, going out in the world and dealing with people, it has been overwhelmingly supportive. Um, tons of support from friends and coworkers. Uh, we've had people bring dinner to the house. It's been, uh -huh. um, it's been, it's been awesome, wow. Over, overwhelming support. And your work colleagues? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, everyone's encouraging me. I, I, sometimes I have to just turn the phone off because I get, I get so many texts of support from everybody. Wow, that's so great. So yes. at least I love that. I love to hear it. Well, you guys, you know, we usually do this segment on the show called Counterpoint. We skipped the Counterpoint segment today. And I instead wanted to offer the ultimate counterpoint to the inherent harassment that Lieutenant Kelly and his family faced for siding with the truth. I think the point of his suspension and doing it so publicly was to humiliate him, right? So as a counter to the leftist point, we are going to publicly celebrate his bravery and in the process hopefully humiliate every person involved in supporting the lie that Kelly did anything to dishonor the Norfolk community. He did not. Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent, and so is Lieutenant Kelly. You guys, I promise you, I was the biggest fan of Ricky Lake when I was a kid. And every time they had a giant check on these talk shows, I was like, one day I just need to hold a giant check. It just feels like it's more money. So I started a campaign on Give, Send, Go for Lieutenant Kelly and his family. I know that they are still fighting this battle legally. I don't care, honestly, what he does with the money. I said, I want to raise $100,000 for him. Unfortunately, that did not happen because you guys at home are amazing. And instead, we raised north of $240,000. Didn't know that until this morning. And I get to hold a giant check. Look at me and my giant check. <laughs> guys, I am living my childhood dream right now. And can I just say, by the way, that this, we had to get this printed yesterday, and yesterday it was at $202,000. Today, this morning, last, last I checked, it was at $240,000, wow. so there's actually even more money wow. than was printed here, but this is just printed because I needed to hold a giant check. <laughs> Thank you so Truly, much. this is for you. Stand up. This is Thank for you. you. Thank you, ma'am. It will be more than this. I'm, I mean, genuinely, I have to say this. I am so grateful for our police officers. I, I, I can't even imagine, especially in today's political climate, what it's like knowing that you're fighting for justice and you have an entire political ecosystem um, of, of horrible people that are constantly fighting against you, fighting to defund you, telling you that you're not allowed to exist unless you side with narratives that are actually lies. So this just makes me so happy. It's more money than we expected. So, I mean, if you want to buy me something for Christmas, whatever, <laughs> whatever, I'll take it. Um, thank you so much thank to you, you for standing up for no. truth. We hope you get reinstated awesome. and I hope you sue the city for what they did to you. I honestly mean that. Thank you so much. So they can take that. Congratulations. <laughs> I got to hold a giant check. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, how is that? For Thanksgiving, guys. How is that for Thanksgiving? I mean, just go out and be sure to reach out to the community members that are supporting your community. We, we should always be grateful for the guys and the girls in blue. They're going through it. Thanks for joining me on this segment of Candace. If you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. To watch or listen to the full show with no ads, become a member at dailywire.com slash subscribe and use code Candace for 25% off your new membership.